guys, I hope you're doing well today. Um, I have a story to tell you, and it might lead to a sermon, or it might be just a story. And I'm calling this a season for miracles. Yesterday, I was feeling kind of uh, depressed. Not depressed, like clinically depressed, but kind of down. Because um, I'm actually working on my first novel, which I will put the uh, GoFundMe page in the description box if you want to donate. That's awesome. If you can't or don't want to, that's okay too. Um, but I was feeling kind of um, down yesterday because you know when you fight for something for so long and you don't see anything, it can get very discouraging. And I was having a day of discouragement. I'm like, Lord, what am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to manage with this? Um, because unlike my other uh, novels, I'm having this one ghost written. And what ghost written means it's going to be my plot, my ideas, but someone else is going to write it uh, for me. And, um, I, so self-publishing a novel is expensive. And plus, I'm having it both written, so that's double expensive. And the reason I decided to have it go through it is I've discovered something about myself. I'm good with coming up with ideas, but actually writing them, physically writing them down is hard for me. And sometimes finding the wording and descriptions, that's physically hard for me. So the story is mine came up with by me, but it's not uh, this time physically written by me. Um, you know, sometime next year. So anyway, I was feeling discouraged. Um, and the Lord just turned it around like that. And some other stuff happened. Uh, some other personal stuff happened that didn't make me feel good as, as well. So it was a a lot yesterday and then God just turned it around literally um, he caused someone to d donate um, quite a lot of money like three months worth of writing just like that and I was like look at God he can and what that did for me was say, you are supposed to be doing this. You are supposed to be um, writing this novel. That confirmed so many things. And I'm here to tell you that God is still in the miracle working business. And it's a season for miracles. So he's... He's, he did it for me incredibly out of no, well, out of nowhere he caused this person to donate like three months worth of writing to my book out of nowhere. Um, and he just did so much yesterday. And he caused someone else before that to encourage me. Um, he said, and he wants me to say this, sometimes your reputation will precede you. So be careful what you do because in a good way and a bad way because 
people remember you by what by who you are and what you do and how you treat them. So I said all that to say always operate with integrity no matter if you think nobody's looking, if you think nobody's watching because your reputation precedes you and sometimes you may not know how you're affecting people's lives but also yesterday I learned that you, if you affect people's lives in, in a positive way, your reputation will will proceed, will proceed you, and one day all your hard work will be will be paid paid in full. One day all your hard work, all your toil, will be paid in full. One day your hard work will be paid in full. One day your hard work will be paid in full. Because sometimes you don't see what, while I was, while I was um, going through my down day yesterday, I didn't see that God had that person ready to donate to my writing project. I didn't, I didn't know that I was being talked about in such a positive way at a meeting that I didn't even go to and the person said it was such glowing remarks about you because of the person you are. And you don't know who's being affected by you. So always be careful how you treat people. There are, I think for um, three things that can, um, that can show integrity. That's my favorite word. Um, it is power money and people like how you deal with power how you deal with money how you deal with people will show your integrity if you are given power do you lord it over people do you um do you rule with an iron fist or are you are you fair and kind and wonderful to work with? Um, or and do you cause people to, to flourish in your presence or shrink in your presence? And when you're given money, um, do you do what you say you're going to do with it? Do you operate with integrity or you just spend it and go crazy because you have it? Or you do any, you want it because you want it and you do anything to get it? Or are you generous with it like this person was with, with me yesterday? Um, how, how you deal with people too, especially people that can't give you anything, how you treat them says a lot about you and all that in integrity, sense of wholeness sense of togetherness will will promote you your integrity will promote you not your money because a lot of people have money but no integrity you don't know what they did to get where they are or bad so you see them on social media and you have no idea 
what they did or what they had to do to get where they are either on the good side either on the positive side and or the negative side so don't envy people run your own road some sometimes we get jealous of other people's road but we don't know what they're going through and sometimes the people around us can't see who we are but the lord says today don't worry about what other people can't see or what they don't see just run the road that i've caused you to run and know that you're enough for that road and whatever i've called you to do i have given you the power to to do it i have given you the resources people have resources that you don't even know and god has set up people like he did that gentleman for me yesterday that you don't even know and sometimes your family and friend your family and closest friends don't see you um for for, for they see you as a great person but they have no idea what's inside of you and that's okay they don't need to see you what needs to happen is you need to know what's inside of you and you need to celebrate what's inside of you and go forward with with wisdom and with grace and and know that god has people with the resources to help you with whatever he's called you to to do and and you don't know who's watching you either on the positive side or on the negative side and you don't know who is who is being blessed by your presence people are being blessed by your presence that don't even know you they don't even know you strangers are being blessed by your presence and the lord wants me to say miracles are on the way yes lord miracles are on the way sometimes we think of miracles as big things but the lord says celebrate the miracles in the little and i will bring the miracles in the much like sometimes we don't see the miracles in the little things and we're waiting for something big to happen while you're waiting for that something big to happen celebrate the little miracles there are miracles there are supernatural events going on in your life every day and god is about to open up your eyes and he says be be receptive to, to celebrating the little victories or miracles in your life that way he can promote you and even if he doesn't promote you it's going to be going to all be for his glory he's put put so much inside of you that he wants to that he wants to bring forth but he's saying to stand strong stand strong in his grace stand strong in his love stand strong and know that you are not alone you are enough and that is all those voices that tell you you're not good enough you can't do this what are you doing those are demonic voices cast them out and keep going and i'm not saying that sometimes wisdom can't prevail um sometimes we we mistake wisdom for demonic voices um how you can tell the difference is 
Um, when you get that criticism, does it resonate with you deep down inside? Or do you just want to, or, or is something in your spirit saying keep going? It's all about your spirit and spiritual voice being connected to what the Father is saying about you. Because sometimes we want to go and do something, but it's not wisdom at the time to go and do it. And the Lord is telling us not yet, and we just want to run ahead and do it. And the Lord's saying, slow down. Listen to my voice. I need you to slow down and listen to my voice. He's got miracles coming for you. And they're av available on the right or the left of you. You just have to open your eyes and ask to see them. Ask for the blinders to be taken off your eyes. Okay, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye. Hopefully you enjoyed my story today. It was more of a story than a sermon. But the Lord said to share what happened yesterday with you, so I did that. And I, if, if you want to donate to my latest novel project. Um, I will put it here in the description. So take care you guys. Have a good day. Bye. The Lord will perfect that concern. Soon, turn in my turn around for me, around for me. The Lord wants me to say the glory is coming. I don't know what that means for people, but he wants me to say the glory is coming and don't quit yet. The problem with quitting is you never know what's going around the corner. And the Lord wants me to say the glory is coming. I believe his glory is exploding around the world. And I, I believe that we just have to open our eyes to see it. It's like his glory is, is exploding, but we, we are too busy having our heads in tradition and this is church and this is what we do to notice that i believe that the glory is here we just have to recognize it and look up um because his glory is reigning all over us and we have to ask him to lift the veil of our eyes so we can see his glory it's in the it's happening in a big way. The earth is growing, groaning not because it's going to end right now. It's because he's going to do something in a big way. The earth is groaning. Earthquakes are happening. The weather's going crazy because he's about to do something in a big way. I don't know what it is, 
but I can sense in my spirit and every in every aspect of my being that he's about to do something in a really big way. I don't know what he's about about to do, but I sense healings. I sense a massive just returning to Christ. And he said, I need my bride to be ready. Not not so much for the coming of Christ. Be ready for that yet, but be yes, but before that there is gonna be a massive awakening to who he is. And that the earth is his and everything in it is his. And he's made us stewards over the earth. And sometimes we haven't stewed stewarded the earth well. But he is just there's going to be awakening of hum an awakening of humankind. I sense it. An awakening of the church. We've been sleeping for too long. We've been just going in our churchy circles for too long. But I think the Lord is raising up a generation who is just on fire, just not for tradition, not for a service, but to see his glory. If you look at the world and and what's going on in it, um, it's just, It's just right for God to show up and show off. And he will. And he will knock all, all everything we know to, into nothing and teach us something new. I believe that the Lord is raising up a generation. Um, and ideas of ministry that will still spread the gospel around. I believe right now there are seven-year-olds and six-year-olds who will, who are, who are, who are sitting in their little Sunday school classes and seeing new ideas for ministry. They're, God's getting a hold of them now and they may not understand what's happening but god is preparing them for later in their lives and parents i believe that um although i don't have children but i believe that god will show you the path that your children ought to take and how to to uh assist with Showing them how to deal with their gifts, with their fivefold ministry, with their evangelistic gifts, with their pastoral gifts, with their teaching gifts, with their prophetic gifts, with every gift. I believe that God is raising up teenagers that have so many different ideas for ministry that have never been seen before that that people are just that they're just exploding in their minds like it's just going to be amazing and i believe that um god is even raising up adults who who thought it was over, but it's not over. It's just beginning. You're, you're 45, you're 35 and thinking that you're too old, but God is going to use you in a mighty way. Because he's given you that. He's given you the bro brokenness. He's given you everything for his glory because if you have never been broken, how can you minister about his healing? If you've never been been down, how can you minister about him lifting you up? 
All this is for a cause. All this is for a cause. And I believe he's raising up a generation like never before that will take the kingdom by force in the most loving way. We'll take it, but we won't take it by brutal force. We'll take it by the force of love. I believe the new force of the kingdom is not brutal domineering force. It's the force of love. I believe that with all my being. Love is a force that we haven't been using. I'm not talking about just romantic love, but I'm talking about love for people. I'm talking about love for people is a force. So if you use the force of love on people, they'll be drawn to you and in turn, uh, drawn to Christ. We need to stand up and use the force of love when it says, um, the, the earth s suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. I don't, oh, 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 oh. I, I sense that it's not brutal force that the violent, that the, that the earth, that the, that takes the world. I believe it's the force of love that will take the world. Um, love is a force that we don't know how to use. Love is the strongest force that God has given us. We often think force is brutal. No, force is not brutal. Force is taking something without apology. But you can take something with kindness, with generosity, with love and with respect. It doesn't have to be brutal. It, when, when it says the earth suffers violence and the violent take it by force. I believe that the force that we're supposed to take it by 